Hey everybody, and welcome to the final episode in the first annual Adventures of Andy Halloween Mega Venture. That's right. I said annual. Yeah? Yeah. You're going to do this every year? We're doing this again next year. Cool. And hopefully the year after. Yeah, can't wait. Yeah. Yay! Yay! I had lots of ideas about the things I wanted to do, and there just wasn't enough time to do it. So, we're going to do those next year. But, today... Today we get to do one of my favorite Halloween traditions. Trick or treating? No, no trick or treating. We don't even get to give out candy of trick or treaters. We never get trick or treaters. I love giving candy of trick or treaters. We never get trick or treaters. The rule of our house is even, we don't care how old you are. If you put on a costume and show up and ring our doorbell on Halloween and say trick or treat, you get candy. But we never get trick or treaters. Maybe one or two a year. Anyway, mm -hmm. no, today we get to do what is one of my favorite of our personal traditions. And that is our annual Halloween build. Mm -hmm. We started out decorating our house in our yard with some store-bought decorations, like the styrofoam tombstones and, and stuff like that. And then we decided to try making some. So we did, we made like the, the pumpkin monsters that you see, the ghost, the cemetery gates and mm -hmm. the tombstones, some decorations that didn't survive the test of time in North Carolina weather. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this year, we are going to use some old closet rods, a bit of chain, the plastic seal from a plastic tub of cat litter, and a bunch of empty water bottles to make of Witch's Cauldron. The first thing that we need to do is we need to cut these down to size. And we're gonna make them all the size that this one is, which should be a pretty decent height. A little over five feet. For a Witch's Cauldron. Mm -hmm. So let's get out the miter saw. And I am not cutting those down to size with a pocket knife. I have a deadline for this. <laughs> so, 10 fingers enter. How many leave? Hopefully 10. Hopefully 10? Hopefully 10. Okay. Andy cuts the pole. I've been doing stuff like this since I was a kid. My dad's the one who taught me to, to do woodworking. <laughs> In order for these to sit a bit more level on the ground, I'm going to cut these to a 20 degree angle. Um, that way it's not, I mean, this is where the flat is like that. It would be just on an edge of it. So we're going to cut the ends to a 20 degree angle. Just to give it a little bit more. And so you're basically just taking off enough to change the bottom and not really lose any substantial amount of height? Yeah, I mean, we might lose a little, but this doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, I mean, wouldn't the witch use black magic to make it perfect? And you know, you're not wearing her dark arts and crafts t-shirt. It doesn't have to be black magic. Mm -hmm. It could be druidic magic. Maybe she grows these from trees exactly. Maybe. To be exactly what she wants. That's our basic shape then. Now we just need to add some black spray paint to these. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to get the rough off because I don't want that to splinter off after we paint it. So, our neighbor decided to start mowing his yard. Our next door neighbor that we share a side of our yard with, so. 
All right, so now we just need to cut these water bottles into strips. Um, we are not going to worry about taking the labels off. These are not uh, just shrink wrap plastic. These are actually on with adhesive. And we're not going to mess with taking these off and having to deal with taking the adhesive off. Because we're just going to be spray painting over this. And the, the label will just give it a little bit of extra texture. So how is the best way to start this? I need to put a hole into the water bottle and not my fingers. that you will know if this does not go well if this video just suddenly stops also it would just probably not air so how wide how wide are strips are we cutting I think I'm top up I'm cutting the bottom off first, and then I'm going to cut up the side. Getting away from me. It does not want to be involved in this. The plastic water bottles owning Chad. And now we have a square of plastic that wants to curl up, of course. But um, I don't know. What do you think is a good? I'm definitely thinking we want to cut it this way since the plastic naturally wants to curl like that. So you think about two inches ish, one inch, two inch. What do you think oh, is better? Two inches, I think. Okay. I think a little more work with. Again, these don't have to be for perfect in size. Um, a rustic look is actually really good for this project. Oh, the, the which makes our culture out of iron a rusty look. So we got some strips. Chad just powering through. We're going to be at this for a while, so we're just going to go ahead and use a little bit of movie magic and. You want to help with the movie magic chat? Sure, is Michael Bay going to just blow everything up? No, I said movie magic. Oh. <laughs> no. Movie explosion. <laughs> Count three, we're going to snap our fingers. Mm -hmm. Movie magic will occur. Ooh, perfect for Halloween. And all of the strips we need will be cut. So we'll go inside while this happens. Yeah, obviously. The gnomes will come out. And... Well, I mean, it's just going to happen instantaneously. Mm. Cool. We're not going to make gnomes do this. No. If they want to help, they can. But yeah. yeah. We're not going to use enforced labor. Okay. No, it's it's movie magic. It will happen instantaneously. One, two, three. And there you go. All done. Yep. We actually end up cutting up 10 bottles because we want 10 of these bottoms to use to form the bottom of the cauldron. Um, and I know I said before we would use five of these, but five of them leaves a big hole in the center. So if you take another one and put it in the center, they don't fit. So we need an extra one, which is a long way of saying we're actually going to be using seven of them, not five. And then we'll use these other four because we apparently did not cut up 10 bottles like we thought. Cut up 11. Um, but we use these other four to glue on top just to give it a little bit more sturdiness. So we have our glue gun ready. It is on, it is hot. I can tell because it is dripping glue. I'm gonna start by just putting just a Glue. 
Need the next one there? Yeah. I guess this will be your center one. Mm -hmm. This will be your center one and you build out around it. Or this will be the center one and, mm -hmm. and building into it. Yep. So we need one right there. Question is, should it go this way for the base or this way? You no, know, this way would actually collect less water in it, I think. I think, yeah. Because the, the holes are right there, mm -hmm. so it can filter down through there. Yeah. And it's still, these four are just here for added structure. They can be feet now, too. Structure. Should we decide to sit on the ground? They can be. Mm -hmm. All right, so I guess that's how we're going to do that. Okay. Yeah. Messing with this while I was waiting for this to dry, I actually discovered that if I curl it backwards from how it is and fight with it, I can actually get it flat. So just like this. And it's it's flat instead of curled. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and lay this across here and then Cross hatch like this. Is this my other flat one? Mm -hmm. I know this one's flat. Um, like this, just for some additional structural integrity. Nope. nope. <laughs> it's just not wanting to stay there. But it's still meeting our purposes. It is. It is. I can't. There's no place for me to pick it up from. But you can see holding it by this. It's actually attached. Mm -hmm. So, are not 100% necessary for our purposes. Seems pretty solid. Check that out. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to. All right, next thing we need to do is um, we took some of the ones that Chad cut the opposite direction from the way we had intended to, and we cut them into thin little strips. And we're just going to glue them between two of these to serve as bridges. Basically. All the way around. Yeah, basically to serve as bridges so that we can then more easily more easily put the round ones around This locked. Yes. Yeah, that would be very nice. What do you think? Looks good. Don't have to fly like a frisbee. It's not supposed to fly like a frisbee. It just needs to support things. So now we got that. Mm -hmm. And we can start with. Right, now the fun begins. Yep, now the fun begins. As we are going to glue these all the way around. Mm -hmm. Repeatedly. Repeatedly. Mm -hmm. All the way up. And we're going to try... Were you trying to snap for Hollywood magic? It worked before. <laughs> okay, we're going to try instead of having to just straight up like a bucket. We're going to try to angle it out and round in the classic cauldron shape. And that's going to be a little tough because we don't have a form to use to craft it that way. We're just going to have to eyeball it. Yep. So. We might end up with a bucket. We might not. Yeah. I mean, if we had a form that we could use to build the shape around, we could just make the cauldron out of that. We're going to go around the corner. So not like, or do you think like this would be, yeah, like this would probably be better from middle to middle. At least as best we can. As opposed to from join to join. That way we've got the... Yeah, that way there's overlap. Kind of like when, when they lay bricks, mm -hmm. where you have the two like this and then the other one. To... Mm -hmm. Exactly. Overlap. Or do you think you can just put a bead right where that is? And we just start with... Okay. And we'll let this dry. Huh? 
The other way to shape it if we need to mm -hmm. is to overlap layers of mm -hmm. the plastic. And build it out. Yeah. On the inside, it would be just a straight, straight walled cylinder and the outside would shape it. But we're going to try to do it this way first and just see how well it goes. Mm -hmm. Considering we're using curved plastic and hot glue, I don't know how well it's going to It's not, it's, it's not sticking. Do you want me to run a whole bead along there? Yeah, let's try running a whole bead along there. Yeah, the glue's drying too fast. I mean, it's already dry. Go high. Huh? Go high. I guess so. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's, it's already dried. So I can't adhere to it. <laughs> we just filled the whole thing and hot glue. There you go. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good idea. Mm. You hold that for me. Hold this. Yeah. There. You've gone way sideways, like way slanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it slipped. It's okay, things happen. Mm -hmm. It is a wonky, wonky witch's cauldron. It is. If we want it perfect, we would have bought it at the store, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, did you turn it back up, the heat? Yeah. Turn it back down again? Yeah, I just melted the plastic. Whoops. All right. What are you thinking? Is it working? We're getting a shape. We're getting a shape. Uh, kind of cylindrical shape. Kind of. Kind of right. huh? rough looking. but Kind of rough looking. Mm -hmm. um, we can use some of these to build this out if we need to. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep at this for a while. This is going to take us some time. Mm -hmm. So we will be back when it's done. <laughs> You have failed us! That's right, folks. We, we weren't sure exactly how well this was working, so we decided to try some other things to see if they would work better, and while we were doing that, we turned around and we looked, and this had happened. That's right. The hot glue is hot not... Mess. Yeah, it's, Hot glue is a hot mess. Mm -hmm. The hot glue is just not holding these together. The bottom still seems really stable, mm -hmm. um, but you know, see the bottom's still really good and solid. But the sides, they just it just pulls apart. So yeah, that's not gonna work, obviously. So plan B was these. These are some jump rings that I made for another project. <laughs> the idea was to punch holes in the ends and the middle, you know, to each of the strips and use the jump rings to attach the strips to each other that way. Kind of sort of like a faux chain mail, scale mail, scale mail type thing. The problem is these jump rings are not big enough to connect them together without putting the holes really close to the edge and we're concerned that they would then split. So we tried using this nylon twine and it worked really well. It keeps them together really, really good. They're not going anywhere. I tied these together with surgeon's knots. So they're not budging. The knots are not going any are not going to come apart. If we wanted really extra security, we could put a drop of super glue on there. Um, not hot glue? Hot glue is dead to me. Um, but it just really, it was really hard to work with to shape it. And it keeps doing that. 
we were about to give up and go steal a um, plastic planter that we've got a fern in that is the right shape and it is our ultimate like if all else fails plan z but that fern is the only container plant we have managed to keep alive and i really don't want to take it out and transplant it because i'm so afraid it'll die if we do but we were about to do that when chad remembered this we actually have three of these and i thought we had thrown them away um apparently the ones we threw away were old ones we bought three new ones to replace those and just never used them and they will work great except that they're just wire frame we need this to be solid but it makes a great form so we did a quick proof of concept And to hold them together, we use staples. You do they have this on the right way, right? Yeah. Not upside down. Yeah, yeah it will not go on upside down. Um, you can see if it's form fitted mm -hmm. and it works. It's not, okay, I can get it to do that. <laughs> we can't give you anything nice. You can't give me anything from recycled materials, apparently, either. Yeah. I fixed it. Okay. But we'll still do that. So we're going to try this and see if this works and give one more shot to doing this as a way to recycle plastic water bottles. We have found that one way to make this a bit more controllable is to cut these strips in half. It means that, yeah, we have to use more staples or if you were to use duct tape would work, whatever. That, no, no. Somebody more skilled than me, maybe, could use a glue gun. And then just staple, just like that. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about this is if we can get it to work like this, using the the plastic strips so we could make several of these mm -hmm. if we wanted to yeah a coven of witches each with their own cauldron that's right byoc byoc mm -hmm. <laughs> too short won't reach don't you need you're just going to take this on with duct tape there you go you can take those together Like this? Mm -hmm. Mix it with this right there. Yeah. And the nice thing about using duct tape is now there's a bunch of people from the alien. Oh. No, that's tin oh. foil. Oh, tin foil? That's tin foil. <laughs> duct tape, man. We now have our basic cauldron. Um, we ran into an issue at the top where quite obviously we couldn't get the stapler in to staple these. So we had to break out the old tried and true, the old trusty duct tape. Um, so we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to cover this whole thing inside and out with some duct tape. Um, do you like the height on this? I think it's good. Okay. This way we can give it a little bit of texture with duct tape and also ensure that all the staples are, are, covered. are not going to poke, poke anybody. But yeah. I don't want to leave it on that way. Okay. Uh, 
covered in duct tape inside and out. I really think it helps a lot. It gives a lot of texture we're gonna have. Like, there's this one spot right here where it stuck out really bad and it just would not lay flat. But laying the duct tape over it, once it's painted, it's just gonna look like a big lump of... Apparently the... Um, steel. Apparently the witchers did not get, you know, high quality blacksmiths to do this. It's just, just a really, really old cauldron. Ah. We need to put like a heavy lip around the edge of it, you know, kind of like they, they have. And for that, you know, I, I happened to look over at the shelves and um, this is just some aluminum foil I had left over from... Dyeing yarn, was it? I think it was from dyeing yarn. Mm -hmm. So I've already gone ahead and done one like this, but I need to see if I can make it stretch far enough to go all the way around and then we'll just duct tape it. I'm not being really precise with this. I'm just kind of rolling it. And I want to go the other way. I want the shiny side again. Help you baking. That's it. No. Because I think the less shiny side will probably take better for the, the duct taping. Look. Okay. Is that gonna? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna start first with just tape it here on this end. Continue on around here and just tape it every so often. Every so often. I think that's cool. The, the little broken rim edge. Okay, so I'm just gonna go and sort of form and sculpt these. You can do that because it's just aluminum foil under there. Maybe it's looking pretty good. Need to drill a bunch of holes in it. So yeah, we need to put some holes in the bottom just to make sure that if it rains, um, which it probably will. It's been incredibly rainy. And then we need to spray paint it. But it is dark outside now. It is late. We are hungry. It's too dark to take this outside and spray paint it. Um, so that's going to have to wait till tomorrow. And we will finish this up then. Good morning! I'm awake. I've had coffee. And now that I have slept and my brain is functioning again, I remembered we still need to make that handle for our cauldron. It's a good thing we didn't try to finish this last night. Yeah. We would have, we would have completely forgotten that. You're going to fall asleep in it. So this is the little uh, plastic seal from the, the cat litter tub uh, that we mentioned in the beginning. And I've just been sitting here and sort of curling it you know, backwards against its molding. And that's working better to get it into the shape that we were wanting. Because we want a round shape. Again, like the cauldron itself, um, it can be all wonky and... Misshapen? And, yes, misshapen. I might need more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Words aren't working for me this morning. So I think that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? I think it looks good. So we're gonna use duct tape to duct tape this. And we're gonna take advantage of the little openings here um, by feeding the duct tape through 
just fold it in half with the sticky side pointing out so it doesn't stick to itself. It will have her stick to you. Or you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we don't want to just go flat across because then it could easily pull off. So Let's see what you got there. Got like Throw this. The okay. I'm going to do the Throw next one. Throw. I'm working here. All right, I'm going to put the next one through. Same way, just fold it over here. You don't want to attach these to each other. You want to kind of leave them butterflied, right? So that you can then take this and attach it. I've got these backwards. Don't tie. They're going to attach like this, which is backwards. Gosh darn it. All right. We will make this work. Attach it like that. And now we can go over with a solid piece of duct tape, which will reinforce that. All right, so apparently. Let's see your Andy work there real quick, right? Apparently, I am going to have to try to see it goes back square again, at least going against it, sort of soften it up. I don't want to say soften it up. It's not really softened so much as it just broke the forming in a way mm -hmm. so that now it's more moldable to my whims. And we are going to want to go over here in the back as well with some more duct tape and possibly even some, you think, over to the outside. Mm -hmm. Yep. And for this, I'm actually going to split it a little bit down the middle so that we can go cross around like that around it and then go over the outside. Pretty sturdy. Now we just have to do the other side and then it will be ready to be spray painted. This was Chad's idea. Um, so full credit to him. We're going to, we, we drilled the hole in the top of the post and he's going to feed rope through this hole and I'm going to hold the other two while he sort of um, weaves the, and twines the Rope around to hold them. He says he's he's got a plan. You got a plan? Nope. Oh, he says he doesn't have a plan. So we'll see how this goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's an adventure. He rather cleverly um, put duct tape around the end of the piece of the rope to make it easier to feed through the hole. I would not have thought of that. I would have just sat and fought with it and been very frustrated. Then I need to be knotted off or tied around or something. There you go. All right. I need to make sure I have them flush on the ground. How is somebody mowing their yard when it just rained? Tangled rope, as bad as tangled yarn. Oh yeah, I would say go through, go around this a lot. We need this to be really, really sturdy. That way you can swing from it, right? I'm not going to swing from it. No. No. I mean, it's got it's got physics on its side, mm -hmm. and we could just keep going like this until the whole thing is just completely encased. There you go. Um, but just see how it's a little bit wobbly. Mm -hmm. I think it'll always be a little bit wobbly. Right, but as it is right now, mm -hmm. one of these posts that doesn't have mm -hmm. the hole in it, you can just do that. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking best idea would be to put the hole in each of them. Mm -hmm. 
take two. Okay, so through here. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then through here or around and through? I think just through. Okay. Otherwise you're gonna try to spin. Okay, now this one. Yeah. Duck. Oh please, like I'm tall enough that would hit me. Come on. But hey, it made you smile. You got to feel like you were tall. Oh, thank you. Pull that tight and then tie it off. And then we can start wrapping it around. Pull a little more through. this and you can start twining. Oh, me again, huh? Yep. Your idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your idea so I do the, the hard work? Ah, mm -hmm. see. That's okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Peter Skill she learned uh, with the British Navy <laughs> serving under Hornblower. Oh, did I now? All right, what's our sturdiness quotient right now? How much more do you think we need to do this? Let's around a few more times. Um, let's see, I'm on five on this, so I need to come around here. So, okay. And then around here. I guess that was a join right there. Yeah, I guess so. Really thick. Okay, so how's it seeming now? Okay. Seems good. Nice and sturdy. Okay. So I think just a few times around now. Can you jump us the whole thing? Yeah. And, you know, over the top. Or top. Can I do a layer on the top of it? Okay. This is as much for a stacks as anything else. around. We're going to tie it off on this here from the first loop. So I'm just going to feed it under here. I've already fed it under the first loop on the back. And then the other here. Sturdy. Now we just need to get the chain on here. This one here? Yeah. Pick it okay. Up. And yeah. I'm going to need a nice sharp wire. Okay. I thought I just twisted the part for you. Yeah. It's a little bit stronger than that. Okay. I should have it. We'll put these two back together. You start with first, just straightening it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Close one first. Mm -hmm. Here, you want to hold that? Yep. And you want you to hold that for me. And just be squeezing this back of shit. Awfully deformed. Nope. 
put that one through. And then we just have to repeat the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now we just have to spray paint this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know you were actually recording that. Oh. <laughs> you didn't know you were actually recording that? Well, there you go. Well, because I don't know that we really got any, because it's pointing down here. Mm -hmm. What you probably didn't actually get to see is we cut a length of the, the chain off and twisted the links open. Well, we didn't cut it off, we twisted a link open to, to take it off the, the whole part of it and then fed it back through and I twisted it back closed again so that we've now got this hook on a chain and we just need to spray paint the silver part. Witch's Cauldron from empty water bottles and a bunch of scraps we found around the house. <laughs> Repurposed. I think it's a good addition to the I do. Cemetery. I do. It's really cool. And we could put a bowl with dry ice in this to make it look like fog, or we could put some spooky flashing lights in there, make a glow of effect. Mm -hmm. Do you have any ideas? Um, put some slime in there to give it a tactile feeling. This year we will probably put Halloween candy in little baggies and put them in there for trick-or-treaters to get so that we can do socially distanced trick-or-treating. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I hope you had a lot of fun joining us on this week-long Halloween mega-venture. Did you have fun? I did. I had a lot of fun. And now what are you going to do? I'm going to go inside and rest. This is a lot of work. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Even though Halloween's over, that doesn't mean the adventures have to end. And I try to put out at least one video every week. And I cover a variety of topics, as you can see, from what we did this week. Mm -hmm. okay. But for now, you have a wonderful day. Everybody have a very, very happy Halloween. And we will see you on our next adventure. Bye, everybody. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Bye. Say bye, Chad. Bye, everybody. Bye.